Hi everyone, this is uh, Roger here at Toss Option and it's December 21st, 2019. I'm going to give uh, a brief update on the current wave structure in the S&P futures. Uh, if you want to get up, if you want to get up to date or see how the, the structure was developed or assumed, you can go ahead and uh, visit this uh, YouTube channel of mine. Uh, you'll know that it's mine because I only have 149 subscribers, so you're probably asking why the hell I'm following this guy. But uh, back in November 17th, uh, you can see some timestamps where the video was created. And that's basically, uh, if you go through that video, you'll get all the uh, information on how the assumption was first developed and entertained. And then things that we did to measure to make sure that uh, Wave 3 was developing. So now we are we're definitely in a Wave 3, but there are some people saying that we could be in uh, Wave 5 or continue to be in a wave three. So I'm going to try my best to kind of figure out which wave we're in. And honestly, uh, I'm not really sure, but let's try and uh, go through the material in the and the chart together. So um, if you go to uh, what we did here in the videos back in November, uh, what we did was we first identified that uh, back here in August 26 that was a, um, a potential wave one so how did we know we only knew after the fact so basically if we do a Fibonacci retracement of wave one up to the top here and assume that this initial move was wave one then wave two would have to pull back to one of these Fibonacci uh, levels and it will pull back to whatever one they want to pull it back to. Nobody will really know. But after the wave two is determinated, then you would have a clear idea of um, of the pullback, the magnitude of the pullback, which was 78.6. And then if you go ahead and visit my Discord channel, you can uh, there's some material here material here on wave three so if you go ahead and click on that PDF uh, there's some rules here for what a wave two uh, it, it requires and one of the rules is that it's got to hold one of these support levels okay so if we take a look at the wave two here it held 78.6 so that's pretty that's a really nasty pullback uh, to say the least and um, and it is what it is so you would never know if it's going to pull back to the 38.2 or it's going to pull back at the 50 or it's going to pull back at the the golden ratio at 61.8 or even deeper or even violate the wave one and go down and move low, make a lower low. So nobody really knows until after the fact. So we call that hindsight analysis. People are really good at that. So if you're a hindsight analyst, analyst then you are doing a great job. So then wave one, two, and then if we assume that that is wave two based on the Fibonacci levels, then we can fairly make, we can make a conservative assumption that the measured move of wave one. So if I click on the low and I click on the high and I pull it back again, you can see a hundred percent of that move is measured and I'm going to project it to wave two, the end of wave two. And then you can see that the uh, measured move of wave one should be at 3,070.5. So what does that mean? It means that if I draw a box here of wave one and I take that box and I move it to wave two, it should be exactly the same. Okay, so that's, that's what I did there. And any price that moves above it, then I'll know we're in a wave three because we've identified wave two now we're in a wave three and now we have to figure out where we are in a wave three how high can this go so using wave one the measured move of wave one and drawing some extensions in there the one two seven two and the one point six one eight it looks like we're in a wave three because price can move definitely a lot higher this is a wave three is the longest wave basically if you take a look here so we've kind of went through that wave two cannot pull, go uh, deeper than wave one and wave three cannot be the shortest wave, which we identified and wave four cannot enter wave one. So we've identified rule one, we've identified rule two. Okay, now 
the problem with rule three is whether or not that is a legitimate wave four that we went through here on December the 2nd. And December the 2nd, there was a gap there that immediately got filled. And as a result, uh, that fill uh, did pull back to exactly the top or the measured move of wave one, which is very interesting. So if we take a look at the retracement, so if we say this is wave three, the beginning of wave three, and this is the top of wave three, then you can clearly identify that uh, price on Dece from December 2nd pulled back to exactly the 23.6. Now that pullback is pretty, uh, it's pretty shallow. In terms of options, that would be, you know, a million dollar trade. Uh, but that is a pullback. And I would, I would say that that is a wave four. Okay. Some people would probably say that that is not a wave four. And that is just a, um, a mini correction, uh, in a long, you know, wave three. But, uh, you know, you're that's the, that's where the subjectivity comes in. So you're going to have to, you know, make an assumption here whether or not that's a wave four to you or that's just a little bit, that's a blip, uh, blip in a wave three. I think it's a wave four. And then if that's the case, then I'm going to use my reference of wave one, measure that again projected to wave four, the end of wave four, and then uh, put some levels here, say like a 78 to 61.8 extension. And 61.8% of wave one has already been achieved. Uh, and then now the next one is 78.6. And then ultimately, if the wave one is equal, is if wave five is equal in magnitude to wave one, then there's potentially a move up to 3,285. Now that, that is definitely, that can definitely happen, um, especially when the market is in an A8. However, keep in mind that there is a gap, uh, that we've identified, uh, that, um, is that around, where is it? Oh, here it is. That gap in the futures that they left for us uh, that happened on December 15th, that is going to have to get filled sometime sooner than later. Because if the market continues to move higher, uh, that means let's say it rips up to like $4,000, 3500 then whichever, wherever it terminates, the pullback to fill this gap here down to 3,100 is going to be a pretty nasty correction, almost to a magnitude of three to four to five percent, maybe even 10 percent. So that's the, that's the, that's the idea there about, uh, that gap. And if the market continues making new 52 week highs, which it definitely can, uh, then, you know, the, the market is in a super bullish state until, uh, there's a reversal candle and currently when you take a look at the reversal the candle the present day candle which uh was formed on friday uh, that is definitely not a reversal candle so a reversal candle uh what happened last time that gap got filled you can take a look at this candle right here these two right so it opened up uh it closed friday on 11 november 27th okay that would be November 27th, which would be, what day was that? November 27th was a Wednesday. And then on a Thursday, and it was red. And then on, a f on December 2nd, which is Monday. So this red candle here was on a Friday. That would be something that we would be expecting here on Monday and that would uh, create a red candle here just like we see here and then proceed to sell off with another candle to fill the gap at 3,175 
And that is the assumption that I'm making because I think that the market is a little bit extended here with that gap fill. And the gap fill that they left here back in um, November 25th, that got filled after one, two, three, four, five, six days after the gap. So here's the gap one, two, three, four, five, right? So the pattern is quite clear. It's just whether or not it's going to play out the way we think it's going to play out uh, if that is a wave five. So some people say that we're in a still in a wave three pattern, which um, honestly is kind of like a guessing game from now because when we did the analysis of wave two, right, this was, we assumed that this was wave one you would never know exactly where wave two, like if we take this Fibonacci retracement level. And uh, again, if you go to the, the YouTube, the, the wave three channel, you can see that uh, some of the Fibonacci retracement levels, 38.2, 50, 61.8, have been all kind of like the price in the S&P just sliced right through them uh, like butter. And then as a result, it didn't hold any of those levels except for when it hit 78.6. So what would you do? How would you trade this if you knew that you were in a wave two? Would you say it terminated here as a wave two? Was it here? You wouldn't know after until after the wave has developed and, and bounced off to, off that level with a candle over candle type of reversal pattern or any reversal pattern, in fact. And after you've identified that wave two, then you can enjoy the luxury of being in a wave three. So um, now we're in the same same boat. We don't know exactly how high this wave five. I'm assuming that this is wave five. And if it does continue to pull back, it's going to pull back to a very clear level where they left uh, any sort of uh, signs of a gap or some sort of support level. And there's no support actually. Uh, in this in this uh, chart until 3,155. So you obviously hear the gap that they left here in uh, November 29th. It overshot that gap quite a bit. And you can easily get that same type of characteristic um, if the market starts to kind of go ahead and attack that gap uh, that they left here on December 13th. Okay, so thank you very much and have a great day.